The Fate Zero rerun is here, and with it, a brand new servant. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for a servant so unlucky he wouldn't even be able to roll for himself, Saber Gumud. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively, and an overall grade, comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 4-star servants. Now, onto Gumud's stats. Saber Deermud has a max HP of 11,362 and a max attack of 10,048. For a 4 star Saber, his HP is well below average, however his attack is among the highest in his class. Comparing him to the rest of the 4 star servants, Deermud has slightly below average HP and a very high attack stat. Overall, Deermud's stats are well rounded as he sports incredibly good attack while still having decent enough HP to take a hit. Perfect for a bruiser type servant. Taking a look at his skills. His first skill is Mana Burst Leap Rank A. It applies Evade for one turn and increases his quick card effectiveness and attack between 10 and 20% for one turn depending on level. His second skill is Honor of the Fianna Knights Rank B. It increases his crit star gather rate for three turns between 300 and 600% and grants him between 5 to 15 crit stars both depending on level. And lastly, his third skill is Beogal Attack Rank B+. It increases his defense and NP gain for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. As for his passives, he has Magic Resistance Rank A+, which increases his debuff resist by 21%, and Riding Rank B, which increases his quick card effectiveness by 8%. As for his deck and Noble Phantasm, Dermot has a Quick Buster deck with Quick Quick Arts Buster Buster and a Quick Noble Phantasm. His his Noble Phantasm Morale Tech deals significant damage to a single enemy with between a 1200% and 2000% damage modifier depending on level. It also removes all defensive buffs from the enemy and has between a 60 and 100% chance to inflict death. Taking a closer look at his cards, we see that his quick card hits 4 times, his arts hits 3 times, his buster hits 4 times, and his extra attack hits 4 times. He has an NP gain rate of 0.73% and a star rate of 10.2%. Deermud has average NP gain due to his good NP gain rate but lack of arts cards. However, he does have some good star generating from the high hit counts and quick base deck. As a proud knight of Fianna, Deermud isn't a scrub. So when it comes to his ascension mat requirements, you'll need to prove your worth by showering him with a ton of difficult to farm materials. His ascensions will require 18 heroes proofs, 16 knight medals, 6 gallstones, and 6 bloodstone tiers. Heroes proofs can be farmed at the pirate ship in Okeanos if you want to be AP efficient, or at Dallas in America where they have the highest drop rate of 66%. Knight medals are found in the royal castle at Camelot with a 35% drop rate. Gallstones can be farmed at the Arakawa Field in Shimosa with a 12% drop rate, and Bloodstone Tears are best farmed at Shinjuku 2 Chome in Shinjuku with an 18% drop rate. For skill leveling, Deermud needs 24 medals, 36 proofs, 48 stingers, and 60 stakes per skill. Stingers are located in the Field of Reeds in Babylonia with a 62% drop rate, and stakes can be farmed at the Gallo Hill in Salem where they have a 67% drop rate. Deermud's class change to Saber comes with a number of significant perks, not the least of which is the loss of his Love Spots charm effect. So hey, at least now it's safe to bring him around your low magic resist waifus. But lore aside, as a saber, Deermud now has some actually impressive stats. His attack is high enough to nearly match saber alter, his star generating is strong thanks to his high hit counts, and while not amazing, his NP gain and HP are far from poor. His passives are also notably strong with very high magic resist and a decent grade of riding to further help him out with his star generating and damage on his quick base deck. From a stats perspective, Dirma definitely has the potential to be a formidably strong saber. But what about his skills? Well, his first skill, Mana Burst Leap, is a very unique variation of the typical Mana Burst. It grants Deermud a 1 turn evade, as well as a 20% buff to quick card effectiveness and attack. This skill works very similarly to Jack's Murder on a Misty Knight in that it both acts as Deermud's primary offensive and defensive skill. From an offensive perspective, the skill can be slightly underwhelming 
as it only provides a 44% damage buff to quick cards instead of the usual 50%. However, defensively, this skill is very strong, since it's a full turn evade on a short 5 turn cooldown. The versatility of this skill makes it usable in a variety of circumstances, and the shorter cooldown makes it less punishing than similar skills like Jax, so it is quite good. However, you're going to primarily want to use this skill offensively, and mistiming it can really backfire, so it is high risk. Dirmud's second skill, Honor of the Fianna Knights, generates 15 crit stars and improves his star weight by 600%. Basically, it gives Dirmud his own own mini crit engine that allows him to set himself up for high burst damage turns. What's more, the star weight buff lasts for a full 3 turns with a short 5 turn cooldown, so this skill combined with Deermud's already strong star generating can turn him into a viable crit saber. And finally Deermud's last skill, Bagel Talk, improves his Noble Phantasm gain and defense by 30%. This is a simple but very effective set of buffs. The extra NP gain helps Deermud tremendously by transforming his decent NP gain into something much better potentially even allowing him to NP spam when combined with crits. The additional defensive buff shouldn't be overlooked either, as the high uptime on it really helps make up for his below average HP, and it mitigates a lot of damage over the course of a longer battle. For skill order priority, I recommend leveling Mana Burst first, since that is Deermud's primary damage and defensive skill, followed by Bagel Talk for better survivability, and then the crit skill last, since it isn't as essential. Deermud's Noble Phantasm is a single target quick attack that removes defensive buffs from an enemy and has a chance to inflict death. Thanks to Deermud's Mana Burst and his high attack, this Noble Phantasm Phantasm does deal significant damage, however it looks better on paper than it actually is. Aside from the good damage, the utility on this Noble Phantasm is limited. Due to the nature of how instant death works in FGO, this overcharge effect will virtually never activate. And while Deermud's Noble Phantasm can be used to remove defensive buffs, the buff removal occurs after damage, so Deermud himself is never going to be able to capitalize on his own NP's secondary effect. In other words, if you use this Noble Phantasm on an enemy that has invincibility or evade, it still won't do any damage. This lack of utility unfortunately haunts Deermud as he isn't able to provide much to the team aside from damage, which makes him a very one-dimensional selfish attacker. On the bright side though, Deermud does perform well in this offensive role. His Noble Phantasm is capable of inflicting heavy damage on most enemies, and it's ideal for boss killing. His good Noble Phantasm gain also makes it easy for him to get multiple NPs off in a short battle, so bosses with break bars aren't as much of a threat. Furthermore, if you build Deermud as a crit servant and provide him with a decent support, his DPS can be very good and consistent even outside of his NP, thanks in large part to his short cooldowns and ability to generate his own crit stars. Defensively, Deermud can be a lot more tanky than the usual glass cannon type of quick servant since he has both a short cooldown evade and a defensive buff to fall back on. But this stronger defensive focus does come at a cost, namely in the form of a general lack of offensive buffs. Deermud's only offensive buff lasts just one turn and is tied to his best defensive skill, making it highly situational with a big trade-off if you choose to use it to buff your NP. Also, despite his good consistency with crits, he has no innate buffs to crit damage, which means he cannot match the type of damage output that other, more crit-focused sabers like Rama or Saberlot can do. Simply put, Deermud's skills don't do enough to differentiate him from other similar servants so that he can have his own niche, nor do they buff him enough to outshine his competition. Deermud's bread and butter is his Noble Phantasm. You're going to want to pair him with teammates who can elevate his damage and NP gain so that he can maximize his burst damage potential. In that regard, supports like Alexander, Santa Altera, and Atlante 
are excellent choices. Alexander is a good budget option thanks to his party-wide attack and quick buffs which help offset Deermud's own lack of high uptime buffs. Altera also provides a good NP damage buff and she can even help out with his crit damage thanks to her second skill. Similarly, Atlante also provides a very strong quick steroid for NP damage and she has good star generating for crits. Speaking of which, if you choose to use Deermud more as a crit servant, then I recommend supports who can provide him a solid crit damage buff like Caesar, Chiron, and Osakabe Hime. Caesar is the best free to play crit support due to his ridiculously strong incitement skill and Deermud can even offset the demerit on that skill with his defensive buff. Chiron is one of the best crit supports overall and is capable of providing stars, crit damage, and buffing Deermud's NP. And Osakabe Hime is just the complete package, providing damage buffs, crit buffs, stars, and extra survivability. Saber Deermud's Bondcraft Essence is Morale and Begal. It increases is the quick and buster card effectiveness of all allies by 10%. Generally speaking, Deermud is a selfish servant who needs to maximize his own damage, so this CE isn't preferable to the other 4 star and 5 star options. For boss killing, I recommend craft essences like Black Grail, Imaginary Around, Someday in Summer, and Golden Wings. Craft essences that can buff Deermud's Noble Phantasm damage or quick damage are preferred. And if you're going to go for a crit build, then Deermud needs craft essences that can buff his crit damage like Jeb Magecraft, Knight's Pride, Heading Towards Trifoss, or Trick or Treatment. And in the future, I do recommend picking up the new Halloween craft essence, Three Anglers. It drops in October and is a free craft essence that buffs quick damage, NP damage, and crit damage. All of the things that Deermud needs. As for command codes, I recommend using Phantasmal Horse. This buffs crit damage on quick cards by 20%, which can be very helpful since Deermud lacks his own crit damage buff. Overall, Deermud can be a solid quick saber. His high attack lends itself well to his heavily offensive nature, his Noble Phantasm is very strong, and because of his high Noble Phantasm gain, he has no trouble tackling some of the late game challenges. He can also be used effectively as a crit DPS when provided with decent supports, and his good defense Defensive skills can make him a bit tankier than your average damage dealer. His lack of utility does drastically limit his versatility and it makes him too one dimensional. He also has a lack of offensive skills and crit damage that really hampers him from reaching the heights that other offensive servants are capable of. So overall, Saber Deermud gets a B- from me. If you need a well rounded damage dealing Saber, he can most certainly fill that role. But unfortunately, Deermud really struggles to find a niche that he really excels in, and his damage on its own isn't enough to really put him over other more specialized damage dealers. And those are my thoughts on Saber Deermud. I do think he's a pretty good pickup if you're lacking a strong single target Saber like Rama or a quick Saber like Fran, but he doesn't really do much outside of that. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over to our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So we're only out. Later.